Is there ever a time when you should not accept seller financing? This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the show, folks. The show where I work with everyday folks like you. Everyday folks like my man, Tim. Tim, what's up, play up? Boop, boop. What we are doing today for Tim and what I think a lot of you out there are going to want to learn about is seller financing and does it always make sense, right? Should you always get seller financing, right? Now, if you're doing any type of research online or this or that, Googling anything about seller financing, you're going to find a lot of coursework, a lot of uh, webinars, a lot of podcasts, a lot of shows talking about seller financing and how to get seller financing, right? But what I want you to pay attention to is what you notice. All of this content is geared towards buyers, right? It's teaching buyers how to go and get seller financing. Never do you see guru courses teaching sellers how to sell their property on seller financing? Why is that, right? Why is that? It's because seller financing is the freaking, oh, the coup de gras. It is the greatest thing you could ever get as a buyer. Personally, myself, I have several million dollars of seller finance notes out there, right? I've bought millions of dollars worth of real estate on seller finance terms. Seller financing has allowed me to do a lot of really creative deals, right? And that's what Tim wants me to help him do, and that's what I've been doing with you, Tim. We're putting out offers on seller finance deals, right? But what I really want to talk about, is when it makes sense as a buyer to turn down seller financing, which is almost never, right? Because seller financing is so amazing for buyers. The reason it's so amazing, guys, is we have multiple avenues of things that we can do that you can't otherwise do, right? Some buyers, right, you can't actually qualify for bank financing, okay? That's why seller financing is amazing. You can't actually get a loan from a bank. Well, guess what? You can get a seller finance loan if you and the seller agree on terms. That's, that's one way, right? Another thing is, with all of us, all real estate investors, we all have one thing in common, right? We can only get 10 amazing residential loans. Residential loans are awesome. 30 years, fixed interest, low interest. If it's not owner-occupied, 15 to 25% down, right? If it's owner-occupied, sometimes zero, sometimes one, sometimes 3.5% down, stuff like that. All that's amazing. But you only get 10, right? Because the government insures them. They only insure up to 10, right? Fannie Freddie, stuff like that, okay? You only get 10. So seller financing is amazing for people like me, right? Doing a lot of deals, right? You want to do more than 10 deals so you can work on seller financing. And those are free mortgages, right? They don't count towards that 10, okay? And then there's, of course, seller financing on big commercial deals. We get really creative, right? I've done deals in the past where we uh, did three apartment buildings, right? One deal specifically. We did three separate apartment buildings, three separate parcels, Worked on that, got a JV partner in there, and did seller financing on a fourth cross collateralized property, right? I was able to pick up 18 total rental property units with no money down doing that deal because I got creative, right? And without seller financing, I couldn't have done that, right? I couldn't have done that. That deal, those properties, I still own them today. No longer do we even have that JV partner. We ended up buying him out, and those properties are probably worth about a million dollars total, right? That's a million dollars of real estate that I own right now. Don't even have that JD, JV partner. And when I bought it, put down no money because I was able to do seller financing. It's friggin' Awesome, right? So that's why you see all that coursework out there. Seller financing this, seller financing that, seller financing this. Do this, you'll learn how to do seller financing. And it's all geared towards buyers because all those things are amazing for us as buyers. Sellers oftentimes do better if they sell to cash paying buyers or buyers that are bringing in their own financing, right? If you're a seller, you usually want to get as much money as you can up front. You don't have any risk and you get your money, right? The power of money in your hand today is typically worth more than getting small amounts of money over a long period of time, right? So when you finally get a seller to the table who's down to do terms with you, right? They're down to do business. You got something amazing and you would think that you'd never want to turn that down. Well, you would be wrong. 
despite all the great stuff I just talked about, Tim, there are times when you got to turn down the seller financing. And I have one specifically that I'm going to get into right after this. Hey, Steve. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Just saving money on my rental property insurance. Oh, my, Steve. Take me now. Holton Wise, real estate investing made easy. Wow, I'm so glad I clicked that link below. Welcome back. Let's get into a specific time you should not do seller financing, okay? Tim, you sent this property to me, brother. 3251 East 118th Cleveland, 44120. As much as I love seller financing, Tim, I can't see you accept it. Why? Because they're, what are they financing for you, dog? It's, it's nothing, right? They're not financing you anything worth owning, in my opinion, right? You, Tim, are an out-of-state investor, okay? You need property management companies to do work for you on the property. You need contractors to work on the property. This property is in a very blighted, low neighborhood, right? And if you're doing research at home, you could figure out if you're going to run into extreme blight, right? When you start seeing some of this stuff, folks, know that you're going to have problems, okay? If you see some of this, you're going to have problems. Sometimes, some properties can be worth zero, okay? This is a Google Air, you know, Google Aerial View, whatever you want to call it, screenshot thing or whatever of the neighborhood, okay? Each one of these things, that's a house, that's a plot, right? That's some land, all right? When a house gets all jacked up, maybe there's a neighborhood where the value of the house is 50 grand, right? House moving ready, they go for 50 grand. Well, if you have a house and it would cost 100 grand to get it into that condition, you have a house that has a negative value, right? It's a value less than zero, right? You wouldn't spend $100,000 fixing your house when you could buy one next door for 50, right? With me? Okay. That's what happens in neighborhoods like this. And then what you start to see, okay? is people, instead of doing anything, they just walk away from them, right? And then the city tears them down, and they give it, they sell the lot for a dollar, or sometimes they annex it into the land before, right? It's called the Cleveland Land Bank, right? It's always land, always land for a dollar, okay? There's one. Here's another one. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. Here's three. Here's another two. There's one right there. Over here, we got one right there. We got two right there, one right there, another four right there. Got some up top there, another two right there, another one right there. Bad boy right there and right there and right there and right there. I don't know if I counted that one or not, right? But you get the point. So all around this house, there's all these houses where when they needed repairs, people are like, ah, screw it, dude. It's worth less than a new house in the neighborhood because the cops keep it down. That's what's happening here, right? So even though seller financing is the greatest thing, you have to buy something of actual value to you for it to be good, right? So this person, even though they're only selling it for 65 k and they're willing to finance it, $52 a square foot. That's insane, right? What's build costs out there, right? Just to build, no land value at all. You're well above $200 a square foot in 2021, right? A fourth of that, okay? means the house has, like, no real value here. That's why it's been on the market for 253 days despite these amazing terms. So for somebody like you, Tim, there would really be nothing you could do here, right? You couldn't pay a company to operate it, renovate it, work it for you in a profitable manner, right? As an out-of-state investor, I know you want to get seller financing because seller financing is awesome, but this is just part of the game. you got to comb through all the leads that just don't make sense, right? I spoke earlier about there's really no guru material out there talking to sellers about trying to finance their assets, right? Because it's typically not in their best interest to do so. One of the only times people like to finance their assets is if you're this particular person. When you're trying to get an inflated price for your property, right? Can't sell it normally in an arm's length transaction, right? So sometimes seller financing allows you to lure in those buyers really trying to hunker down on it, right? 
But that's not you, Tim, because you're smart, brother. Before you make a move in my market, you know to come here and get my take on it. That's exactly what you did. This deal's a dud. Let's move on to the next one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.